Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Today we're going to learn all about the new American Acoustasonic Stratocaster. I've kind of been jealous that all the other YouTubers got sent these things, and I've always wanted to try one out, so I went ahead and I bought one with my own money. So these are my unadulterated opinions of this guitar. So just in case you missed it, last year in 2019, Fender announced the new Acoustasonic Telecaster. At Winter NAM, they did the normal lineup and people lost their minds over these things. And then at Summer NAM, they introduced an exotic wood version for twice the price. Personally, I think those exotic wood versions are really cool. I would love to do a demo of one of those in the future. But at 2020 Winter NAM, they came out with this, the Stratocaster body shape within the Acoustasonic lineup. But don't make the same mistake that I was kind of thinking and a lot of people probably do think. They didn't just port over the same electronics that they did for the Telecaster version into the Stratocaster body. Every sound is, yeah, for the most part different. Here on the screen, you can see what all the Acoustasonic Telecaster did on each of its various points. And here's the presets for the Stratocaster. As you can tell, when you compare the two, they have a lot of different tonalities. For example, you now have an electric dirty channel on the Strat, and the other ones just kind of have various small differences between the types of acoustic guitars that they're emulating. You can switch between position A and B using their mod knob. So in a weird way, it actually does make sense to own one of each of these if you like these guitars. But what, what exactly is this anyways? Because we're kind of diving in a bit too deep already. So this is an electric acoustic guitar that's based on the Stratocaster body shape, except for they've turned it into an acoustic and they have three different pickup systems in here. You've got the Fender noiseless pickup for three different settings within this thing for electric guitar tones. Then you have an under saddle piezo bridge pickup. Then they have a body sensor pickup, so you can still do like your tapping stuff. But at the same time, it also has an acoustic loudness to it all on its own. This is what you never see in other people's demos. Nobody ever plays it unplugged. Here's that compared to a semi-hollow guitar. Now for the comparison that you actually care about, a true acoustic guitar. So no, it's not as loud as a traditional full-bodied acoustic. But if you're just playing at home, it's plenty loud, especially considering how much smaller this guitar is. This is really great for that guitar player that likes the sound of acoustic instruments, but, you know, isn't really comfortable with the huge body that these things usually have. So I think for the compromise, I actually really enjoyed this thing. And this isn't the first time that they've turned the Stratocaster acoustic. There was actually something called the Strat Acoustic that was done just a few years ago. And it kind of had a similar thing going on, but just not quite as extreme and not as high end of an instrument. And when we're talking high end, how much does one of these things cost? It's $1,999. So yes, they are rather expensive. And a lot of people are asking the question online, why don't you just buy a good electric and a good acoustic? And that's something you can definitely keep in mind, and I'm gonna think about that while I film the rest of this review, whether you should do that or if there truly is a place for this guitar in the market. But you can choose between five different colors on these guys. There's a three-tone sunburst, a natural, Dakota red, transonic blue, and then this one, black. So what were my first impressions of this thing? Picking it up right out of the case, I gotta say, I mean, if you watch the unboxing episode of this one, I was not in love with this guitar at first sight. It felt like a cheap toy. This is the first time I had ever touched or seen one in person. And if I'm being honest, none of the color options really worked for me on this guitar. It was kind of like, uh, which one is the less evil? So I went with this black one and I was pleasantly surprised with what I was delivered. The whole reason why I went 
went with the black one is because I felt, you know, it contrasted against this natural back the best. And something that makes this particular one extra fancy is the ebony fretboard. It's just perfect on this one. It's got almost a half and half. Half of it's streaky, half of it's dark. It just matches the rest of the guitar. They're not all like that. Some, some of them have a lighter board. Some of them are streaked in a different way, but I'm really happy with this example. And check out the back. The mahogany back here even has a lot of nice figuring to it. Most of them out there seem to have this. And being that I'm more of a Gibson fan anyways, I really love those old deluxes, the blue sparkle top and the red sparkle top. And anytime somebody does like a black top R7 or something, I just think they look really cool when you have a solid colored front and then you have a natural back. So that's kind of what steered me this way to go for the black finish. So despite not being, you know, super in love with it at first, as soon as I strummed this thing, I was like, okay, all right, I think Fender might be onto something here. I can understand the height because I just love the acoustic sound just strumming this thing. It's super slim, super comfortable, a very familiar shape, but actually keep in mind, this is larger than a regular Stratocaster. This will not fit in a standard Stratocaster case. You can squeeze it into one of those Tele Strat style cases, but the vintage tweed cases do not fit. So that is something to keep in mind since these things do ship in a gig bag, which some people might view as a bad thing. But we'll just kind of compare the uh, body contours here to a real Stratocaster. This is a, uh, I think a 58 reissue. So you got a little bit of an arm contour. It's just not quite as extreme. But the body shapes are fairly similar. This one is just a little bit wider. I would have never noticed it had I not tried to fit this in a regular case. But before we go ahead and plug this one in, let's go ahead, and throw it on the workbench and tear this one apart because I am really curious to see how Fender makes this thing work. So the only thing that I have to complain about this guitar, like quality control wise, is a few finish things. I noticed that this part of the finish looks glossier than the rest. And I know satin finishes can be buffed into gloss finishes, but this is how it came from the factory. I tried cleaning it to see if that would come off, but the, it just seems like an uneven area in the finish. That one's just a residue from my cleaning, but there was another one, yeah, right here that also had that same thing. So I don't know what's up with that. It kind of bugs me a little bit. So that's one of the best things about this guitar. I mean, the whole satin finish and it being very lightweight makes it feel like a cheap glary guitar, but once you actually strum it and play it, it's like, oh, okay, all right, it's not a cheap guitar by any means. Apparently this whole sound hole design is patented by Fender. They put a lot of time and effort into it, so it's not just a small little thing. You can see that's like the full size of the body. I can't quite get my calipers in there, but it's about an inch thick. But it just appears to be like a hollowed out cavity in here where all the electronics sleep. So it's a rather thick portion. But maybe when we look in the backside, we can see the front from there. But as far as the way this guitar is constructed, it is a mahogany body. And then you have a spruce top that they kind of just inlay right here, if I understand that correctly. You can see the spruce top right there around the rosette here. But here is our electric guitar pickup. They're calling this the Fender Acoustasonic Noiseless Pickup. And they tell you in the instructions, do not adjust the pickup height for this unless you're a Fender authorized tech because you could potentially crack the top. So we'll have to see what that's all about. And then here we have a Fishman under saddle pickup. So I'm guessing that's what this little red thing is right here. But here we can see it is a Graf Tech saddle which I believe is made of their Tusk material, T-U-S-Q. That's supposed to be what the bridge pins are made out of as well, as is the nut. And then we have this whole system. This is just your master volume, so that's nothing too crazy, but this is your selector switch. So this is position one, two, three, four, and five. But something I think Fender has backwards here is the way that they've done this. So normally, if you have this in the all the way on position, like a regular knob on 10, that is the B position. Whereas if you roll it off, it's technically the A position. I would prefer it to be the other way around. That was really only a problem for me because I'm trying to demo the guitar and figure out which one is what for you guys. But the bridge here is made of the same ebony, probably the same ebony that they're using here on the fretboard. But that is glued to the top just like a regular acoustic style instrument. 
Moving on here, we go to the neck. It is a mahogany neck. That's not something you always see from Fender. You've got 22 narrow tall frets on this guy, which is your standard white inlays here. But man, after I conditioned this board, it kind of helped bring out that brown streakiness in this. This fretboard, I am absolutely in love with it. It just makes this whole guitar's vibe work. It really does remind me of the Pale Moon Ebony Telecaster that we did a review on not too long ago. As far as neck specs, we're rocking 1.67 inches, so that's a little bit thinner than normal. And at the 12th fret, 2.01, so also a little bit skinnier. And this is supposed to be their modern deep C neck shape, so 0.83 at the 1st fret and 0.9 at the 12th. Here's a quick visual representation of that. So this is at the 1st fret, nice and rounded but thin. Then it gets a little bit wider but still has that same roundedness to it. And we've got that standard 25 and a half inch scale length. Moving on to the face, you have your truss rod adjustment right here. That's the biflex style. You got a single string tree and you get the laser engraved Fender logo. I think that particularly looks nice on this one because it's just a natural headstock and that makes it stand out because it's a slightly burnt color. So that's nice. Moving on to the backside. I'm seeing this the first time you guys are as well, but I found it interesting that they chose metal back plates. I would have liked to have seen like a dark ebony back plate, but it's probably for shielding reasons, it would be my guess. But I mean, this, that could have also been wooden, but it is metal as well. But you can see our serial number right here. So this is technically a 2019 made one. And in there you can see it does have the micro tilt adjustment. So that's nice. You don't have to worry about doing neck resets on this guy because it's a bolt-on neck. But here you can see that these were actually manufactured in February of 2020. So what is the inside of the... Oh boy. <laughs> I guess I don't know what I was really expecting, but a giant PCB system. It looks like we're operating on quick connect, so that's pretty nice. If something does go wrong, you can just, you know, easily replace it. But it seems to be a combination of hard wiring and that. Oh, and by the way, they never ever talk about this as far as I'm aware of. Look at what's right here. You get a scary little face guy. So you got the two screws here that mount it. You've got your output jack right here, and then you have a micro USB. Most acoustic electrics actually need a battery to operate. But what they've done is given you a rechargeable battery that you just plug it into either your computer or you can plug it into a power brick like that. But that is something that I learned. These things need a battery. And this just looks like, you know, a regular Stratocaster tremolo thing, but we do not have a tremolo bar on this. That would be interesting. Oh, okay, so something is attached here. So I think the, the battery itself, because I notice it is attached to right there, so that must be that where that charges. And here is our noiseless fender pickup that they're calling the Acoustasonic Noiseless. Looks like it says NVMVT, kind of looks similar to the Ultra series, the early ones anyways. It's interesting how they have to cut a little bit of the wood out of the way there to get that pickup in there. Then this is that under saddle bridge pickup. I can't quite seem to find that other one, but it just kind of seems to be built like a semi-hollow instrument. You've just got two chambers in here. I guess it'd be more of a fully hollow bodied one because you don't have the center block. I can't seem to find where that body sensing pickup is though. So we've got those guys. Maybe it's built in here underneath it or something. Or maybe that's two pickups in one. I am not sure on that one because all the wires are, you know, right here. So it can't be anything hidden up here. So what's kind of cool is what you're seeing here is the top side of that hole, the one that we measured that was about an inch. And then I can't quite get my camera to focus, but then you have that very small gap on top of that that shows where they're kind of making it look like an acoustic guitar. So the whole thing seems to be chambered except for that little area that kind of gives you the illusion that it's not. That is a really cool design. And I think that's what made these things look better than the Strat Acoustics. But cool. Now we know what the inside of one of these Acoustasonics looks like. Now we never have to tear it apart again because that's too much stuff. Here's another cool feature. They actually give you the slightly modded heel joint right here. So they carve some of that away just so it's a little bit more comfortable up in the higher registers. That's something else that I've really been enjoying about this guitar is just the action on this thing. It's so low. All the acoustics I've played, I mean, even the best acoustics, they're kind of uncomfortable up here. But this one still has that familiar electric guitar action up at the 12th. 
So I think it could definitely be useful recording in those areas for an electric guitar player. It's also kind of an interesting way for an electric guitar player to build up finger strength because you still have the super thick gauge strings on here. After my first day of playing this thing, my fingers were all torn up, but that's good for building calluses. And then when you switch over to the electric guitar, it'll just all be easier to do bends and all that stuff. But the neck itself, it's just mahogany, again, a satin finish, and you've got your fender tuners right here. The knobs themselves appear to also be made of ebony. It's kind of a letdown that they did the switch tip here in plastic, though. But now the big question, how much does this thing weigh? I already told you it weighs almost nothing. Let's find out. Four pounds, 13.1 ounces. That's what I'm talking about. If you're thinking that this is an electric guitar, the lightest weight electric guitar, I think if you get a really good Stratocaster is what, about six and a half pounds? Most of them throughout the ages probably range from seven to nine. To put it into perspective, here's my Taylor on the scale. It's actually a little bit heavier. So that's actually something that could be a good difference if you have a bad back. You can pick one of these guys up. So let's go ahead, plug it in and hear what kind of tones I can get out of one of these. And we will be running it through a Fender Deluxe Reverb amp today. I don't have a proper acoustic amp. That's what you should be running this through. But here's what it'll sound like if you don't have one of those.
Now that we know all about the American Acoustasonic Stratocaster, what are my final thoughts on this thing? I think I'm officially converted and I understand why people like these things. I was not quite expecting to enjoy this guitar as much as I did, especially after my first impressions of just feeling it. But I could seriously see myself owning one of these because I'm mainly an electric guitar player, but I really love the sounds of acoustic guitars. So this, it can kind of get you there. I mean, you could probably put electric guitar strings on here if you wanted to, but then you'd be losing some of that acoustic sound if you did that. But it still feels like an electric guitar and you can get all that other stuff. It sounds a little bit more convincing than just putting a piezo system on a regular electric guitar. And at $2,000, I'll agree with you guys, they are expensive, but should you just buy an electric guitar and an acoustic guitar? I think it depends on what you're going for. If you're a gigging musician, I think this would be great for that coffee house vibe because you're well prepared for everything and you don't have to take multiple instruments. But if you just stay at home and you have a nice acoustic that you think is comfortable and you have a nice electric guitar that you find comfortable, then yeah, you probably don't need one of these unless you like that the body's thinner. As far as the tones go, I was very happy with the acoustic sounds out of this thing. Now, when you get to the electric, I think it's just mainly a novelty feature at this point. I don't think they quite have that dialed in. Something else to keep in mind, you cannot do distorted licks with this thing. There's a reason why they give you a clean, a semi-clean, and a dirty channel within this. As soon as you step on a distortion pedal, it's feedback city. So that's something else to keep in mind. A regular electric guitar will take that super distortion a lot better. But all in all, I would definitely suggest at least checking one of these things out, either the Stratocaster or the Telecaster version. Fender just might be onto something here. Besides just buying an electric and an acoustic, the other thing people talk about is a Taylor T5. Honestly, comparing them side by side, I think I prefer the look of this one better as more of an electric guitar guy, but I've never tried the T5, so I can't really say one way or the other if one is better. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed taking an in-depth look at this new Fender Acoustasonic Stratocaster. I like it. Maybe you should try one too. Maybe not. But before we say goodbye, let's go ahead and check it out under blacklight. As far as the blacklight test goes on this one, eh, we don't have anything too crazy to look at here, but we get a little bit of glowing, mainly on the face of the headstock. But again, it's a complete satin finish on this thing. So it's definitely super comfortable to play, but you can also wear through that finish pretty easily. This is just something that confuses me about the Acoustasonic lineup. Why do they not get hard shell cases? I get it that the main demographic for these are gigging musicians, so they think that they might want a gig bag because it's easier to lug around. I mean, they do have good shock absorbers right here. I mean, that's literally like a tire. You've got two of those. You even have a little bumper pad right here that kind of secures to the other side of the strap button. That way it doesn't like crack your guitar if you drop it. So it's a good quality gig bag. I mean, tons of padding. I really, really like the handle on this. It's like a gel. And inside here they have two neck blocks, but you can actually move them. They're on a Velcro strip right there. So they just lift off and you can move them however you want them to be. And you've got a zippered pouch right here and then another one out here. So you've got room to put stuff in. You can put your name tag in there. They also got a little tag right there. And here's all the case candy you get. A nice little baggie for all this stuff. Your typical Fender manual, a quick start guide that kind of tells you all about the tones for these. And your Fender tag, your charging cable, and your certificate of authenticity. Thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning in to this episode of the Troglodytes Guitar Show. If you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this particular Acoustasonic Stratocaster, you can check out that link in the description, which will take you to the Reverb for Sale page. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.